GR56 and the zoo's Graphomat 64. Um, the machine that does the calculations, the machine that does the drawings. And this is all work by Frieder Nake, who at that time was a uh, student in mathematics and built some of these first aesthetic images uh, with computation. So this is the, uh, the zoo's graph mat doing one of uh, executing one of Nake's drawings. So this was a, this machine was about uh, 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters. It weighed about a ton. And um, my obsession with it there is partially about the physicality, about um, the machinery and the materials. Um, here we see computation. We see the calculations. Um, this is on um, the ER56, the vacuum tubes firing, etc. Uh, and what we're listening to while we're watching this is a piece of music written at the same time. It's Harry Riley's in C. The cinematographer got a little bit out of control and they trying to make this exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but what's so amazing about this image is this, this is a computer <laughs> that's entirely wired by hand. Hand solder connections. All of these wires um, put through according to a spec and done that way. Here we see the tape drive where things are stored. <coughs> we pan across the machine. I don't know exactly what he's putting in. <laughs> but so, and here's the operator. He's in a glass contained um, space. So the machine uh, itself is under carefully controlled environmental conditions, air conditioned space set to a specific temperature. It's very fragile. The operator just kind of sits away from the machine inside an enclosed case. Um, this is Frieder Nake. He's programming. I think we all know that people used to program like this through flow charts. Um, and then into punch cards, and then things would execute. But the reason I love this video is you can see it. Um, you see the process, you see the material involved. Operating the computer. It's of course before, before mice. Numbers. <laughs> and then this is what comes out of the machine, the paper tape that defines the drawing that then gets fed into the graphomat and then executes the drawings. So this is just a two-axis plotter um, with pin up and pin down. Yet we still have the syntax in action script. Um, line two, move two, et cetera, et cetera. That all comes from, from Potter. These are Nake's drawings, so the kinds of things that he made with this extraordinary machine. Um, like a lot of the pioneers in the mid-60s, random processes were um, of great interest. And so there's this idea, the question. You have this perfect calculating machine that's meant to uh, add with, uh, without making mistakes. Why do you introduce random elements or random function? And the answer to that is something about simulation. And when you build a machine to do simulation, you have to have a little bit of noise in order to simulate the world more accurately. It's a paradox, but I think the extremely interesting one. Um, we'll stop this in a moment. I just want you to see the machine drawing this particular piece. Um, this is homage to Paul Clay by Frieder Nake. And it's one of the more intricate uh, um, and sort of complex designs from that time. I think also just imagine something coming out of an inkjet printer. Imagine something coming out of a laser writer. And then see what's happening here. Um, it's not treated as a graph script. The machine's actually drawing step by step. A lot of people at this time experimented with different types of materials. You know, you don't have these limited inkjet papers. You can really draw a paint on anything. One, attaching brushes to different instruments, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry, so that is really not that long ago, 1965. Um, it's just not that long ago. 